Hey guys, um, quick tutorial on how chromatic adaptation can be really useful for fixing white balance in post on some footage here. Um, so uh, I have a bunch of different examples on how you might be able to correct white balance, and chromatic adaptation is going to be one of them. Um, but uh, we'll go back. I actually have an original RAW file here, uh, which means I have access to, of course, the RAW controls. I can adjust the white balance here. Um, and uh, let's just say that this is how I want my scene to look. Um, this is a hotel in Chicago, by the way. Um, and I picked this just because it's it's got a decent amount of white here and some strong colors in the carpet and these uh, green and these flowers. Um, just to show you what I'm doing, um, so I'm debaring into uh, RE and log C. Um, I'm setting my white balance correctly since I can. Um, and then I'm going uh, in here, I'm converting from log C to DaVinci Intermediate. So I guess this is my working space. Uh, then I've got my color grade, um, which is just adding contrast basically. Uh, and then I've got my display output transform. So this is going from our working space into uh, 709 BT 1886, you know, gamma 2.4 or whatever. So this would be like a typical um, workflow uh, for grading something in a scene referred way, um, like with color management, for instance. Now, of course, I don't I'm not doing anything to my white balance because it's already correct. I was able to, to do it correctly. But of course, what would happen if you were handed this, where um, this is a, a, a log C video, so it's log C footage. Um, but if I do the same grade um, to it, um, obviously the white balance is not correct. Now I made this, uh, what I did is I took the raw file and I just set this to be really wrong and then I exported it for the sake of this demo. but. You know, sometimes you might get handed this uh, because it was set wrong in camera when somebody filmed something and it's on you to fix it. So I'm going to take you through the various different tricks to fix this. Um, but before I do, I kind of wanted to just talk about how this even works. Um, like, why can we adjust white balance on a raw file and not in here as easily? Um, so... Uh, the thing about raw footage is um, when you capture light, you're not just capturing red, green, and blue, right? There's an entire spectrum of light and all of the different frequencies of light. In the case of D65, for instance, D65 is not just a point, or it's not just like 6500 Kelvin, it's actually a, a, a specific spectral measurement of sunlight, for instance, in different parts of the world. And of course, there's all different types of illuminance. There's tungsten and things like that. But cameras are not perfect. Uh, just like our eyes, they have uh, filters in them for the Bayer sensor. Um, and you notice that these overlap each other a little bit, which the human eye does as well. Um, so there's a bit of kind of crosstalk in between these channels. They, you know, there's a little bit of red in the green and there's a little bit of green in the red and, and so on. And of course, it's different for, for uh, different cameras. Um, so how do you achieve white balance? Well, you achieve it uh, with metadata in the raw file, uh, which allows you to adjust the red, the green, and the blue before you demosaic or debayer. Um, and you adjust them in linear space, and it's adjusted again before you debayer. So in the typical raw file, you would have obviously your, your actual raw data. You'd have um, some calibration matrix math, um, and you'd have the tone curve um, information. Most raw files, by the way, are typically log um, if they're 10 bit or 12 bit especially in internally they'll, they'll they're secretly log um, the Sony Venice camera can shoot in linear but it's 16 bit um, and the data rate is insane it's like many gigabits per second or something like that but um, so so you know the the encoding tone curve which means we can extract linear information and we know the matrix math and by the way the way that's derived uh, like scientifically, is somebody actually puts a camera in a lab. Um, so this could be Adobe, for instance, doing this, or this could be Sony or Canon or whoever. Uh, and they will put it in a lab with very special calibrated light sources, uh, and they take a photo of some test charts. Uh, and in the case of um, Adobe Lightroom, which is a popular like photo editing program, um, this is an example of a calibration profile that Lightroom uses. If anybody's ever used Lightroom, you know how you can like change the, the different profiles to 
do raw decoding. Um, well, you can see here we've got uh, our different aluminants. We've got uh, this is tungsten, standard A is tungsten, and then we've got D65, and we have a bunch of um, uh, matrix math to help us uh, convert that into a uh, XYZ color space. And then from there, your software can make these adjustments. Um, and by the way, you can actually do this yourself. Um, uh, raw therapy has a great guide on how to do your own raw calibration, which is pretty cool. You actually take a photo of like, you know, one of these uh, little test charts because the spectral reflectivity of all these patches is a known defined thing. Uh, and they actually tell you like how to take a picture of it. And you actually need to use a real tungsten light bulb that actually gives off like, you know, the correct spectral uh, information and everything. Um, but anyway, I'm getting into how raw files work, but that is why we have this uh, adjustment. But the reason adjusting white balance here, even though we know the tunker, we know that this is log C and, and we know our color space, it's still a challenge because there's all kinds of crosstalk between the channels, right? These are overlapping with each other. So let's just try some stuff. So the first thing a lot of people might reach for is the white balance tool, which is this little thing here. Uh, and this gets us pretty close. Uh, I, I did this obviously beforehand um, to, to try to kind of get an idea. And you can see it's okay. Um, there's something going on in the concrete over here that doesn't seem right. You know, maybe we could finesse this more, but um, white balance tool is obviously not the best option. Uh, and, this, and all this does, all this white balance tool does, by the way, is it just moves uh, red, green, and blue gains uh, around. Um, but okay, so let's try another one. Well, let's try the HDR white balance tool. So this one, uh, the HDR palette is set to, uh, it, we're actually telling it so that it's color space aware um, what our working space is. And uh, you can see we're at minus 4,000 here. I had to go all the way down to. And uh, let's see, did that fix it? Let's see. Uh, eh? To be honest, I almost think the uh, the regular white balance tool will work better in this case. Um, but, you know, HDR, it might work better in, in different scenarios. So that's another trick. So what's another trick in the book? Well, one really popular option is offset. Uh, and by offset, I literally mean this offset knob. Uh, and the reason for that is that when you're in a log space, um, so DaVinci Intermediate is a, is a log space, uh, log C is you know, another example, especially any kind of a Cineon based log space, uh, the offset knob works very photometrically. And what I mean by that is it's almost like adjusting stops of light or uh, almost like changing F stops on a lens. You can adjust the red, green, and blue um, in a very linear fashion almost uh, when you are in a log space and you use offset. So a lot of colorists will reach for this. Um, and that also makes sense because, you know, keep in mind, if you're grading a movie or something and you have thousands of shots to get through, um, you know, offset is a giant knob in front of you on your control panel. So, you know, a, lot, a very common thing to reach for. And you know what? It does pretty good. We got some weird stuff going on here with the carpet. Uh, and of course, this is a daylit scene. Um, and who knows, you know, what uh, the spectral reflectivity of this carpet is or these plants, but it's okay. Um, I think it's probably the best so far that we've seen at fixing this. So, okay, let's try another option. This is a slightly more kind of tricky advanced version of offset. In this case, what I'm doing is I'm converting from our working space to linear with no tone mapping, and then I'm converting from linear back to our working space with no tone mapping. So that means that this is taking place in a linear space. Uh, and so what I've done, this grade, is I have made linear gain adjustments to the different red, green, and blue channels. Uh, and by the way, I had to set my luma mix uh, down here to zero so that I could um, so that I could just get pure control over red, green, and blue. And this also did a pretty good job. Um, I could probably have tweaked that a little bit more. Um, yeah, I'd say uh, I'd say this one did a little bit better than, uh, than the other one. Um, so this is probably the closest we've gotten to nailing this, uh, fixing this, this white balance problem, this, this bad footage, is uh, doing that in linear space. Um, 
Okay. So let's try chromatic adaptation. So remember that we've got overlap, right? So we've got pollution of the RGB channels. So how can we solve that? Well, we don't have access to this information anymore. We don't we don't know how the camera saw the scene. But what we could use is a human visual model to try to fix this. So what chromatic adaptation does, and you'll notice that I am telling chromatic adaptation my source color space and my source gamma. And I've also got it located as close as possible to the input because we want to let chromatic adaptation get as close as possible to the um, the original camera RGB space. Because every time you make a color space adjustment, you are mixing the red, green, and blue channels more and more. It gets harder and harder to, to kind of get around that. So we're going to go as close as we can to the beginning. And so what is this source and target there, the source and destination? Well, I happen to know, and I'm cheating here, right, um, that the original was 4200. That was correct. So what I'm saying is I think the source or the scene was 4200 Kelvin. That's what it should have been. That was what the lighting on set was. And the target is what I think was wrong. Um, so in this case, again, I'm cheating. I happen to know that I, uh, you know, secretly set the white balance incorrectly and I set it to 6500 Kelvin. Um, but we were kind of telling it this is what was incorrect. Uh, so here's our source, here's our destination. And now we can see we got pretty close. This is about the closest we can get to the original. Look how close these are now. There's a slight difference in the red on that carpet there. That's something I notice. Um, there's also a slight shift in the green on these plants. Uh, and again, this is using a human visual model. And so how is chromatic adaptation actually working? Well, what it's doing internally is it is converting our footage to linear and it's converting the color space to an LMS color space. Um, and this allows us to use various human perception uh, models. So maybe not the, um, the camera sensor, but we can maybe judge how a human would have seen, uh, would have viewed it. Um, and here's our different models here. Um, there's Bradford and Cato 2. And of course, you can Google these different human visual models and how they work. And, and of course, you can click through these and try them and, and see how they work. Um, Cato 2 is the default, and it's probably the one you can use. Um, but by using, uh, by, by kind of inferring how a human would have seen the, the set or the scene, uh, we can get very close to the original raw file. Uh, you can see there's just a slight shift in the waveform down here when I click between these. Uh, and of course, I probably could have tweaked this a little more and gotten it even more perfect. Um, but that's how chromatic adaptation works. It's a pretty cool trick to uh, achieving it. Again, it's not perfect. Um, you know, this is a this is a 10-bit um, DNX HR file that I made. You know, it could be ProRes or something like that. Um, and obviously, there is crosstalk, and we don't quite know what that crosstalk was because we don't have access to that information that that information has been lost on us um but we can do our best uh and that's how chromatic adaptation works so uh yeah if anybody has any questions let me know um and uh hope this helps anybody who has to fix uh bad footage that they might have gotten uh, or wants to adjust white balance enjoy